there's just something about a wood burning fire and barbecue that is next level. And often you find that on something like an offset smoker, but can you get that same great flavor without all the hassle of maintaining a fire? Well, today I'm going to try running a wood only fire in my master built gravity series to see if you can get the same great benefit without having to roll up your sleeves and do all the work. Let's find out. So before I tell you about the baby backs as well as the method that I'm adapting to get good quality smoke out of a master built using only wood for fire, I want to acknowledge those who have gone before me and the inspiration for today's video, two people in particular. A bit over a year ago, I saw Tom Horseman attempt this on his master built gravity series. And what he learned and shared in that video is he filled his hopper with wood and ran a low and slow temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And what happened instead of all the wood all burning up is he created charcoal. This is a great way to get charcoal perhaps for free, uh, but I'm not sure from a creosote perspective, this is what I want to put on our baby back ribs. My friend Tommy from Gallery Backyard Barbecue did something very similar, but he made an adjustment instead of filling the hopper with wood, only added a couple splits at a time. And so this, uh, he was able to see nice, clean, open flames at all times, even though the temperature once again was on the low side around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And when he contrasted how it tasted compared to his offset, which is something I cook on regularly and know that smoke done right should be sweet not bitter. He was describing a little bit of a bitter smoke in creosote, which is what I think you're getting from those low and slow temperatures. So to try and solve this and building off of uh, two friends who have gone before me uh, and tried to turn their Masterville Gravity Series into an offset smoker, I'm going to take from Tommy the idea of not filling our hopper and going with only a couple splits at a time to help maintain good airflow, nice open flames and good combustion. But I'm also going to bump the temperature up to about 275 degrees Fahrenheit in the hope that this uh, goes from smoldering wood to an open wood uh, flame at all times and see if we can't get a little bit more of that sweet savory smoke that offsets are absolutely famous for. While our master built is coming up to temperature, let's go over to the kitchen and I'll show you how we're going to prep our baby back ribs. Not going to do anything too fancy, keep it nice and easy for today, just in case it goes all horribly wrong. But so far, I'm feeling good about it. Meet you over there. Try and keep things from blowing away on me with a couple wood splits on our foil. Not going to do anything fancy today. I'm just going to get our baby backs out of the package, pat them dry, add a little bit of yellow mustard for a binder. And since I bought a bunch of rubs for my how to make your own rubs video, I still have a bunch left over. So I'm going to do a base of garlic jalapeno and some voodoo, which is really nice uh, on ribs. So I'll take you fast forward while we get our ribs all prepped and ready to go. I'll also mention, I'm not going to remove the membrane. If you still do this and you're struggling with it, absolutely continue doing it if you got it down pat, but it really doesn't seem to make any difference that I can tell from a flavor perspective. So I'm not even going to bother. So I'll take you fast forward, get these out, dry them, mustard, rub base, and I'll meet you over by the pit, which is preheating right now. Remember, let me know we get much better results on the second shelf. And I found that with my made in pulled pork videos. I'm going to stick with that and just put a bit of a drip pan underneath with some foil wrapped on it. That'll make it nice and easy for cleanup. I know you're not getting a whiff of that, but this smells like an offset. <laughs> That's, that wood is burning clean. Let's take a look inside. So now that we've got our baby backs on and we're holding a nice steady 274 to 275 degrees right on the money. And I actually like what I see every time I pop open the hopper and take a peek down inside. I'm continuing to see nice open flames and about every 30 minutes or so just adding another wood split. So why uh, are we doing today's cook? Well, last weekend I did my first low and slow smoke on the Gravity Series. I did a, a pork picnic roast and while it became clear pretty early on that it was not going to be ready in near uh, dinner time I traditionally have a little bit of a bias towards these Wi-Fi smart grills why is that well maybe it comes out of a, a few bad experiences with pellet grills way back when those experiences recapped in about 30 seconds are a couple things one power goes out in the middle of the night you've got an expensive brisket on there and as soon as the fan and the fire is out your food is garbage the next morning if you didn't have any other way of being alerted. The second is inclement weather. And so where I am, uh, if a little bit further north, we get all four seasons sometimes in full force. So whether it be rain, snow, these tend to not be friends of electronic components. And then third is just an extension of that electronic components. Well, I'm sure my offset, I'll be able to pass down to my kids and my kids, kids, uh, if they're so inclined to continue the family smoking tradition, uh, these just don't have a reputation of lasting a lifetime because we've got moving parts fans, computers, wires, probes. Uh, and for me, that's just not my personal uh, cup of tea. But 
uh, this grill put a couple points on the board in a big way in that cook. So while I mentioned it wasn't going to be done for dinner, my wife and I left, and when I started to get an alert saying the pork was gonna be ready and I was about 10 miles away from home and not uh, wanting to rush back in order to finish it off, I was able to remotely dial the temperature of the grill down. And when it became clear, we wanted to stay with our friends and have a bit of an evening. I was able to, once again, remotely turn it down all the way to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, essentially turning this into a remote hot hold oven. And I held that for two hours at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So when I did eventually get home, I was greeted with some pretty spectacular pulled pork. I gave it a 10 out of 10 for smoke cleanliness. It was really good. You can't do much better in terms of smoke cleanliness. What was missing for me is smoke quantity. And so that is the idea behind going from a charcoal fire with a couple wood splits added in to all wood because if we could take that same smoke cleanliness but add a whole lot more of it we're on to something and maybe my little bit of uh, bygones be bygones with power and wi-fi uh, might become a bit more of a thing of the past if you could just get that great of a result uh, without having to do an all day effort uh, yourself. So that's what we're in for hopefully later today so I'll rejoin you with any updates uh, but otherwise I'll see you later on in the afternoon for our taste test. Okay, our baby back ribs have been on for just about five hours now. And the game plan has remained, as we thought, very simple and straightforward. So about every hour or so, I give them a quick spray, developed a really nice looking bark. And just to help be able to pick up the taste, I'm not gonna be adding any sauce or simple syrup or anything like that. I really just wanna be able to focus in on the quality of the smoke. I started to check for probe tenderness around the three and a half, four hour mark, just to get a sense where we are. We still were at about 160. So these are now all the way up to nice probe tender, about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think it's time to get them off, let them rest for a couple minutes, and I'll meet you over in the kitchen for our taste test. Well, these certainly look the part. Let me know down in the comments, your guess if it's gonna be good or absolutely terrible, I don't know. So let's just flip these over. I'll get a couple ribs out here for our taste test. Great looking smoke. See if they taste good. Okay, time for the best part, the taste test. They certainly look the part. Let's see if they taste half as good as they look. Mm. Oh, wow. Perfect bite through. I mean, I obviously know, but if you told me these came off an offset, I'd believe you. And I'd actually think you knew what you were doing on the offset. These are really, really good. Okay, I need an intervention. Otherwise I'm gonna keep cleaning bones. Let me get a napkin, tell you what I think. So, wow, that's all there really is to say. I don't know about the longevity. Again, I still don't love wires and Wi-Fi, but if we just park those fears or concerns for a second and just focus on the food, this is a mighty capable little smoker. So before uh, I mentioned in the pulled pork or the pork picnic roast that I did, we were a 10 out of 10 for clean smoke. I was just lacking in the flavor. This has now gone from, uh, we've kept the 10 out of 10 for clean smoke. So this is no dirty smoke, not getting any of those issues that I saw Tom Horseman or my friend Tommy from Gallery Backyard suffer with trying to maintain those lower temperatures around 200 degrees, I think 275 was the answer because not only are we getting clean smoke, we are getting good smoke. And this was incredibly easy. I was only adding a couple splits sort of every 45 minutes to an hour. So not quite at the same interval as I would on my Oklahoma Joe's this is a similar size where I'd be adding wood every 15 to 20 minutes. This was relatively low key and pretty darn remarkable. So let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or a head to head, uh, that's the best way to compare is do them at the exact same time and taste them um, side by side. If you'd like to see that uh, head to head between my Oklahoma Joe's as the affordable entry uh, line on an offset versus something like this, AI uh, computer controlled grill smoker of the future, let me know down in the comments. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take these inside and enjoy them. That's it for today. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to, Fire it up.